folks, Dr. Hagmeyer, and I wanted to shoot today's video because earlier this week I had a phone consultation with a lady who was just beside herself. She had her thyroid removed four years ago, and ever since she had it removed, as you could probably imagine, her health has just spiraled out of control. Uh, depression has intensified, ha has severe anxiety, she can't fall asleep, she wakes up uh, because her heart is racing, she's gained 80 pounds, uh, and she's on seven or eight different medications for many, many different symptoms that she's experiencing. And no matter what her doctor does, he can't get her thyroid levels into range. One month he's increasing her thyroid medication, the next month he's decreasing her thyroid medication, the following month he's changing the kind of thyroid replacement medication that she's on. And so I asked her, I said, you know, why was it that you, that you had your thyroid removed in the first place? And, you know, I'm thinking perhaps it was cancerous. She was having trouble uh, breathing or swallowing. She told me that she had several nodules uh, throughout and on her thyroid gland. Uh, they weren't cancerous. They weren't causing any problems with uh, breathing or swallowing. But her doctor just felt that it would be in her best interest to have it just removed. And so at this point... Uh, I'm kind of thinking, you know, and wondering to myself and, and, and asking her, you know, are you better off today having your thyroid removed or would you, would you have your thyroid removed all over again? And she said to me, Dr. Hagmeyer, I would never have my thyroid removed again. She's like, my life has been turned upside down. And as she's telling me this, I can, I can hear she's breaking down in tears. Tears are rolling down her cheek. And she said, Dr. Hagmeyer, I would give anything to go back in time, keep my thyroid, and work on all the things that are possible that I have control over to influence and improve my health. She's like, I've lost my quality of life as I know it. And so I couldn't help but wondering, you know, the last question I had for her was, did your doctor at any point ever tell you that you have Hashimoto's? And again, if we looked at and talked about some of the symptoms that she had, she had symptoms of both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. And she said, yeah, my endocrinologist said that, that I had Hashimoto's. He told me that years ago. And so herein lies the problem. Many of you watching today's video have Hashimoto's and either you don't know it or the doctor you've been seeing is, is really not doing anything to, to change the, the course of, of action of the immune system's destruction on your thyroid gland because that's really what Hashimoto's is. Hashimoto's is the name given to an autoimmune disorder where the immune system is destroying the thyroid gland. And year after year after year, as the immune system continues to just destroy the gland, it doesn't function and eventually it just shuts down. And so if you're watching today's video and you have nodules, okay, and you have goiters and you're fatigued and you notice that your heart is racing and you're having hair loss and you're having palpitations, again, you have symptoms of both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. You need to be tested for Hashimoto's if you haven't already been done, if you haven't already done so. And so maybe that's you. Maybe you're, you're watching this video and you're thinking, geez, I feel so lousy and no matter what my doctor does, he, they can't stabilize my thyroid. And year after year, you're noticing that you're getting sicker and you're, be, you're being put on more and more medication. Well, if this lady would have known what to do about her autoimmune disorder, there may have been steps that she could have taken, lifestyle changes, dietary changes, nutritional supplementation, that could have offset the course of this terrible autoimmune disorder that has literally just robbed her of her life and, and has ruined her life. If this is you, I want you to know about the antibody testing done that you need to have done. Some of the red flags that you should be aware of uh, if you've recently been diagnosed with hypothyroidism and why the tests are important, okay? I hope this video for some of you is just a wake-up call that you cannot take this lightly, okay? You, you have to be, um, you have to take a very proactive effort in, in doing so. So the first test I want to talk to you about is what's called the thyroid peroxidase antibody test. Okay, this is a test that many doctors who suspect Hashimoto's will often order. Uh, but I wanna say this, is just because your doctor orders a TPO test and it comes back negative, that doesn't mean that you don't have Hashimoto's. It doesn't mean that you're in the clear, in other words. There's another antibody test that you should have done. In fact, I recommend that every single person uh, who is diagnosed with hypothyroidism or suspects hypothyroidism, that they get not only the TPO antibody test, the thyroid peroxidase test, but I also recommend that they get the anti-thyroglobulin antibody test or the anti-TGB test. One tells us that the immune system is attacking an enzyme, which is essential to make T4 and T3. The other tells us that the immune system is attacking the protein needed to make T4 and T3. 
So again, I want you to listen to very carefully. It's important that you have both of these done, okay? You cannot have only one done and then assume that the other one is normal. This is a big mistake, and this can be a very costly one. And I know I already said this, but many doctors only test for TPO, okay? So now that you know what tests you need to have done, the next question is, is who should get tested? Well, like I said, there's in, in my understanding and in terms of what I believe, I believe that if you fall into any one of these four categories, these to me are, are, are basically like sirens going off. These are four warning signs or four red flags that make me very suspicious that there's an underlying autoimmune disorder that's part of this and the reason behind why you're suffering. So red flag number one is that you've been recently diagnosed with low thyroid. You have hypothyroidism in other words. And so in the last six or 12 months, you've been faithfully taking your thyroid medication. And at first you felt better, but now you're back to feeling lousy. Okay, all of those symptoms, depression, debilitating fatigue, inward trembling, heart palpitations, feeling cold all the time, being more emotional, brain fog, loss of memory, difficulty enjoying life, all of these things have, have basically crept back into your, into your daily existence. So that's the first reason. Red flag number two is you've been diagnosed with a goiter or your doctor's told you uh, that you have multiple nodules. They've done an ultrasound, maybe they've done a, a biopsy, and uh, they basically have, uh, no matter what they do, again, they can't stabilize your thyroid. One month you're taking a certain amount of thyroid hormone, the next month you need more, the next month you need a little less. And so again, with each fluctuation and change of your thyroid levels, your symptoms are fluctuating and, and obviously intensifying, getting a little better, getting worse, getting a little bit better. Uh, your doctor is constantly increasing or decreasing your dosage, and you basically, perhaps even in some cases, are being switched from one thyroid replacement to the next. So that's red flag number two. Red flag number three is, is that your thyroid was removed, okay, because either like this lady, you had a lot of different nodules on your thyroid, and your doctor just thought it was, um, you know, important to, to remove it, or let's say it was cancerous and it had to come out. But again, no matter what the doctor does, they, they simply can't stabilize the thyroid gland. The problem here is that a lot of times when people have their thyroid gland removed, accidentally there's also damage being done to the parathyroid gland, and that's the gland that regulates calcium levels in the body. So again, just something that I want you to think about, and this should make sense to you, is if you have an underlying autoimmune disorder and you remove the thyroid, all you've done is remove the thyroid. You haven't done anything about the immune system. You still have an autoimmune disease. And what we commonly see is that when a person has Hashimoto's, it's not uncommon for them to have other autoimmune diseases, okay? Things like lupus and diabetes, uh, celiac disease, okay? And many, many other different kinds of autoimmune disorders. Well, those are the, some of the, the more common ones. And finally, red flag number four is that you have many symptoms of low thyroid or hypothyroidism, but your doctor tells you that there's nothing wrong with your thyroid. This is probably the most frustrating thing that I hear from women day in and day out. Uh, their doctor simply has run a TSH and a free T4, the levels fall within range, and so everything is normal. There's nothing wrong with you. We've got to get out of the habit of just trying to, to treat numbers on paper, but also take into consideration how a person feels. And I think this, in the allopathic world, is completely missed, okay? The point being here is you can still have Hashimoto, Hashimoto's disease and have very, very normal TSH and T4 levels. It just depends on where and when your levels are being tested. So again, like I said earlier, you could test a person with a thyroid disorder every month for six months, and you will see TSH levels and T4 levels all over the place. The problem is, is most doctors only test TSH and, T, and free T4 levels once a year. So if it just so happens on that day, your TSH and T4 levels are in range, your doctor says there's nothing wrong. So the point being here is don't rely on your TSH and your free T4 levels as indicators uh, or a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, okay? The other thing I want you to realize is don't assume that just because you're not overweight or heavy that you don't have Hashimoto's, okay? Many people think that you have to be overweight to have a thyroid disorder. I can tell you I have just as many people that are, have a very, very thin build and an underweight have a tough time putting on weight that are Hashimoto's, okay? So again, if you visit my website, drhagmar.com, you can see all the different thyroid markers that I recommend for anyone who has or suspects that they have a thyroid problem, um, as well as just a recap of what those thyroid markers mean, what they, what they test for. If you want to get in touch with our office, uh, you want to find out more about natural thyroid 
treatment. Okay, we don't prescribe medication, but nevertheless, we do work with people in optimizing their thyroid function. The best way to get a hold of us is just um, through a contact us form on our website. So, in closing this, I, I know that we've gone over a lot of different things, but I just want to do a quick recap here. The number one cause of low thyroid disease and why women suffer for years and years uh, and why they often don't get better or feel better on thyroid medication, why they end up with uh, you know, taking antidepressants and anti-anxiety and acid reflux pills and beta blockers and cholesterol lowering pills is because their doctors are only looking at the quantity of hormones, not what's affecting the quantity. They're not looking at all of the other metabolic issues that are triggering the immune system to destroy your gland. Hashimoto's is genetic, okay? So while you can't change your genes, you can improve the metabolic factors, the environmental triggers that do have control and do influence your thyroid gland. And number three is if you don't address these triggers, years will go by and you're only gonna get sicker year after year after year. If you're a woman and you have children, this is so important that you take the necessary steps to be proactive in their life to minimize the chances of that immune system also destroying their thyroid gland and going through everything that you're going through. My final point is remember this, is that no matter what kind of thyroid hormone replacement that you take, the amount of thyroid medication that you're on, this does not address the triggers, okay? It simply replaces the hormones that you've lost as a result of destruction to your thyroid gland, okay? And again, some of you are watching this, and if you have Hashimoto's, you need to take your thyroid hormones, okay? Don't think that just because you, you are gonna take a natural approach that you don't need thyroid hormones. In many cases, nothing can be done to make up for those lost hormones, okay? But you can identify those triggers, you can minimize the destruction of the gland, you can maximize the way your body converts T4 into T3 by addressing all of these different triggers and these metabolic issues that I've talked about on my website, okay? Again, if you visit my website, drhagmeyer.com, there's a video that I did titled 10 Steps to Supporting Your Thyroid Naturally. The, this is an overview of the 10 things that I have found over and over again that are so important to naturally supporting your thyroid gland. Um, you can get better. You, you need to find a doctor who's gonna look at these different triggers, who's going to address this in a holistic uh, aspect, and then also work with you in terms of changing your diet, getting you on the right kind of supplementation. So I do want you to realize that no matter how bad you feel right now, you can get better, okay? We do it every day in our office. We help people get their lives back, and I know that the same can happen for you, okay? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you found value in it, please share it with other people that are out there that are suffering, searching for answers, and just don't know where else to turn, okay?